Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's a pleasure to have you here. Today we're going to be talking about picture making techniques. Now, my name is Chevron Edwards. I'm a visual arts lecturer and I believe visual arts is a great tool to build, develop and encourage students to be the best and most productive members of society. Now picture making techniques and picture making activities are great ways to develop the skills of students, not just artistically, but their problem solving skills, their creative thinking skills, their critical thinking skills, and their whole holistic development. Art does that for children, develop them in multiple ways. So today we're going to look at some picture making techniques that can be used as evaluation activities, that can be used as teaching aids, that can be used as pastime activities, but more so activities that will develop critical thinking, problem solving, and some of those critical attributes for the working world today. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, so here are today's objectives. We're going to define picture making techniques, and we're going to identify and define 10 different picture making techniques. We're going to look at how each of them is done, and then we're going to review some instructional materials. So the instructional materials are some resources that I've attached to the PowerPoint and to the presentation, as well as I will be putting these links in the description for you to access there. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, let's look at what is a picture making technique. Now, this is simply those untraditional ways or methods of making a picture. Moving away from the average ways, the normal ways, and exploring some unique methods for creating pictures and images. All right. So as it, as it says here, this is simply using unconventional methods to create a picture or image. All right. Let's continue. Now, here are some examples of picture making techniques. These are the ones that we're going to be exploring in this presentation. Collage, mosaic, frottage. Crayon etching, paper batik, wax resist, paper molar, stencil printing, random printing, and stippling. All right, so we're going to kick things off with stippling. Now let's look at what stippling is. Now let's look at what stippling is. Now stippling is basically a picture or image made using the element dot. Now dots are compiled in a particular way to create form, to create texture, to create colors and to create a real life image or design. Now, stippling is very oftentimes confused with pointillism because they are done in a similar format. However, the major difference between stippling and pointillism is that pointillism use paint, while stippling use other writing utensils such as pencils, pencil crayons, colored markers, pens, or regular markers, all right? So stippling is all about using those writing instruments, those dry media instruments, okay? So it is simply created when you put dots together to create a design. So it's an intentional design, okay? Let's look a little bit further at some other examples. Now, this is some instructional material that you can access that will help you expound some more on how stippling is done and see some examples of stippling. Now, I will put a link for this down in the description. Now, what skills can this activity help children develop? Now, stippling can really help a child to understand how to group, how to create, and how to control their fine motor skills. It can be a great activity to develop fine motor skills. It can be a great activity to develop critical thinking. It can be a great activity to develop the child's awareness of creating form, 
of creating texture, and of creating images. It is also improves the child's ability to draw. So these are some great activities that that can help with. Now let's look at random printing. Random printing is also called junk printing. It is simply using objects or found objects around the environment to create some unique prints or decorative designs. Now these designs can be really interesting depending on the items that you use because it really pulls on some interesting textures and designs from your environment. Now here's some instructional material on junk printing. You can really have fun with this exercise. This exercise is a real great activity that you can use in your lessons to really get children engaged. Now what skills can this activity help children develop? Now this activity can really help children to appreciate the things in their environment. It can also help to build their critical thinking and creativity skills as they seek to pick the best designs from their environment. And they will not only see objects as objects anymore, but start to appreciate the elements and the designs that are put into creating these objects. It also helps to develop the child's fine motor skills, decision making skills, critical thinking skills, and their ability to be more independent and create their own material, create their own things. It helps the child to really unlock that new side and new creative thinking and to appreciate art and appreciate the design process. Now, it's like John printing, stencil printing uses a similar format. Now, stencil printing is one of my favorites because stencil printing is a real great way for children to explore colors, to explore designs, and to really get creative in a functional way. Let's look at what stencil printing is. Now, it's a method of transferring a pattern by brushing, spraying, or squeezing ink through a stencil. All right. Now, stencils are created using different materials. You can buy ready-made stencils or you can create your own. Now, stencils can really allow children to understand the creative design process as it relates to clothing, as it relates to sheep, as it relates to even automotive designs. Now, here's some instructional material as it relates to stencil printing and a video you can watch as, as to how to do stencil printing. Now let's look at some skills that can be developed when a child does stencil printing. Now the child will understand the importance of negative and positive space. They'll understand design and they'll understand how to create functional things in their environment. And not just in the environment, but for themselves. Because stencil printing is a great exercise for teaching the children how art can be used to earn, how art can be used to make money, and how art relates to their immediate lives. Because stencil printing can be used to print t-shirts, to print banners, to print signs, and the child can make connections with art and this particular area. But let's look at how it develops the child. The fine motor skills are well developed when using sensor printing because when the cutting comes into play, the child will require fine motor skills and a decent level of control as it relates to operating this particular instrument. The child will also learn the importance of color, the importance of space, the importance of design, and will also help the child to think critically as the best way to achieve each of these designs and the best way to get their idea across and the best way to transfer their designs. So stencil printing is a great exercise for that particular thing. Now wax resist is another method. It's a very unconventional method and one that you might not see commonly around and a lot of teachers sometimes shy away from this particular one. Now, wax resist is all about creating a design using wax. Now, the wax is placed on the areas that you don't want any color to go. Because the wax 
and water or wax and paint, they won't mix. The wax will create a, a barrier between the fabric and the paint and will prevent it from mixing. So when you start to apply your paint, your dye or your pigment, the wax will resist it and you can create a pattern with the wax or draw an image with the wax and then when you add the, the, the when you add the paper or the fabric to the dye or to the paint then you will find the areas that the wax are laid out will be resisting that particular color or pigment now it's a great activity that can re really a revealing activity to the children and can really help them to understand how barriers and resists are created. Now here's a video on how you can create your wax resist. If you like wax resist, you can visit this YouTube link here and you can create your own wax resist. Let's continue. Now what skills can this activity help children develop? Now this can help the child to develop their critical thinking skills as well their designing skills, their hand-eye coordination, and their understanding of color. It's a big activity that requires concentration, memory, and understanding because the child will be required to remember where they put the wax so that they can know where to put the colors to create their design. All right, let's continue. Now, crayon etching is another one of my favorites because they can be so beautiful when they are done because of the high contrast between the colors and the black. Let's look at what crayon etching is. Now crayon etching is a technique that involves the use of materials such as wax and water-based paint. Now what happens with crayon etching is that the wax is used to color the paper first after which it is painted over with black and then now the picture is carved into the paint which reveals the colors underneath it. Now it can be a very satisfying exercise for the children and it can be a very rewarding exercise because at the end of the day, regardless of how well a child draws, you will find that the image comes out will reflect the colors and will be aesthetic aesthetically appealing to the child and it will just look beautiful to the child whether or not the image is drawn properly. Now it's a simple activity and it requires a lot of thinking and creativity because the child will now place the colors based on their feelings and how they want the child or they want it to come out sorry. Now here's some instructional material on how to create a crayon etching. Now there are two videos here, I'll put both of them in the description so you can access them both. Alright? Now what skills can this activity develop? Fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination once more, and the child's understanding of color. The child's critical thinking skills will also be developed because the child now has to make keen decisions as the crayon etching technique won't allow them to make corrections. Due to the nature of the technique, the child will have to work around whatever choices they make. So it helps them to understand how to create their own designs and if they make a mistake, they will have to learn how to make that mistake either part of their design or accept it for what it is. So it will teach them some life skills as well. Now, paper batik, another one that is not so famous amongst teachers or students. It's a very interesting technique that can be used for children. Let's explore what batik is. Now, paper batik is a form of resist dyeing. Now, remember we looked at wax resist earlier. Now, this is another form of resist with wax. Again, the only difference with this resist is that you will be using colored wax instead, the colored wax in the form of crayons. Now, what is done for this particular technique is that the picture is done, drawn, colored, and then crushed. 
Now the crushing that you do with the paper cause cracks to come up and these cracks will cause the wax to flake off in these areas. When the wax flakes off, then a coat of paint or a coat of dye is applied and then you will find the paper absorbing the paint or the, or the dye in that particular area which creates a nice cracked look on the picture. Now here's some instructional material on how to create your own batiks. They are very interesting and there are some nice things that you can use this technique to do. What skills can this activity help the children to develop? Hand-eye coordination again, color understanding again. It can help the students to also appreciate the design process. It involves critical thinking again, decision making again, and you can also help the child to understand contrast and how things are created. Now the next technique we're going to be looking at is collage. Collage is a little bit more famous than the others and a little bit more common than the other picture making techniques in this video. A lot of teachers use collage and a lot of students use collage as evaluation activities, as assessment activities for different subject areas, even outside of art. Now collage is simply a picture made up using a variety of materials. It's all about taking things that are not generally associated with, with each other and putting them together to make one composite picture. Collages can be really fun for the children because it helps them to explore material in their immediate environment and it can be really it can be a real good evaluation activity for lessons. Take for example a history lesson. You can pull different historic materials, you can pull different traditional materials, you can pull different modern materials and you can put them all together in one picture to create one representation of history. It's not only aesthetically appealing, but it is also educational and can also be functional and be used as a teaching aid for the child. Collages are very fun, very engaging, and don't require a lot of um, drawing skills, let's per se, because sometimes, a child, sometimes children, they tend to shy away from drawing exercises because they don't think they have the skills. Collage exercises are great exercises to encourage everybody in the class to participate because it doesn't require a lot of those drawing skills. Now collage originated from the French word colère, which means to glue. So most collages use glue to put these images together. Now while you have different types of collages, most collages are compiled using glue. Now let's look at the different types of collages. You have paper of several kinds, that is when you use multiple paper types to create a picture such as printing paper, newspaper, cartridge paper, bleached paper, or whatever type of paper you have. Now paper and fabric now is a combination of papers and fabrics to create a picture. Most of these are self-explanatory, paper and paint, paper paint and drawing, etc. So collages are really a variety of this. Now this activity really works on a child's critical thinking skills because it puts them in a position to assess the material that they're selecting and rationalize why they're going to select these and how they're going to let their idea or their concept come out. It's highly cognitive and really helps the child to work on their fine motor skills while working on their critical thinking skills. It's a great evaluation activity for teachers and can be really and can really be used as a tool to encourage all the learners in the class to participate. Now paper mona is not as famous as the others, but it's a very beautiful and neat technique if you ask me. It uses a lot of contrast and can be really fun for children. Let's look at it. Now what is a paper molar? Now paper molars were adapted from the Kuna tribe in Panama where they used to create their fabric using applique panels. Now these panels were done using bright colors, contrasting colors to create their designs on their fabrics. You can explore this particular type of technique 
in your own research and can get a pretty good understanding of it. But let's look at the paper molar itself. Now it's all about cutting different layers of paper in a particular pattern or shape such as to reveal the layers underneath. Now these layers now will be used to create the design or create the picture, create the contrast and create the different designs that come out when these colors are revealed. Now if you like this technique or you would like to explore it, here are some instructional material that you can access. Now paper molars really rely on contrast and really require good hand-eye coordination and a good eye for design in order to execute. So if you think you have these competencies, then you can jump right ahead at it. What skills can paper molar develop in a child? Now this activity can really help a child to develop their organizational skills, their fine motor skills, and their critical thinking skills. Simple as that. All right, so the next technique we're going to explore is the frottage. Frottage is one of my favorite techniques because of how little material you need to execute it. You just need your crayons and a piece of paper and you just need to be somewhere because frottage uses the textures from the environment. Let's look a little bit more into frottage. Now, a frottage is created when a picture is colored or shaded on an uneven surface. Now, the intention of the frottage or the shading on the uneven surface is to pick up the texture that the surface has. So it's simply copying the texture or pattern that the surface has and using those textures together to create a unique picture. Now, it can be a very fun exercise for children because it can be done in the form of a scavenger hunt, it can be done in the form of an exploration activity, or it can be done as an evaluation activity for a topic. Now, this technique doesn't require a lot of drawing skill and can really encourage children to explore the areas around them. It also helps them to pay attention to the finer things in life and help them to get creative and to understand the way to associate textures with different surfaces. Now, Helms 2016 describes a frottage as a technique in the visual arts of obtaining textural effects or images by rubbing lead, charcoal, chalk over paper laid on a granular or relief like surface. Now, other than chalk or charcoal or lead, you can use pencil crayons, you can use pastels, you can use wax crayons, but I think the best effect is gained from lead or pencil crayons because those pick up the textures the best in my opinion. Now here's an instructional video on how to create a frottage. If you feel like the frottage technique is one you want to explore or you would like to teach your kids, you can use this link here. It will be placed in the description. Now what skills can frottage help the child to develop? Now, this can be used to develop the child's observational skills, their critical thinking skills, their hand-eye coordination, their evaluation skills, and their understanding of their environment. Now, the fine motor skills are also developed, the color appreciation is also developed, and it also helps the child to really appreciate their environment and understand their environment. Now our next picture making technique that we're going to be discussing is mosaic. Now what is a mosaic? A mosaic is simply a picture or pattern created using small pieces of stone, tile, glass, paper, etc. to create a picture. Now mosaics have been around for years. They've been around for a very long time and most persons would normally see mosaics in churches as those were used that mosaic technique was used for their stained glass windows and other patterns created in the church. Now you might find mosaics being used on walls today or even in the driveways when they use broken tiles or broken shells and even stones to create patterns in driveways, to create patterns in walkways and to create patterns on the walls. Now it can be done in an abstract form or it can be done in a representational form. 
Some of the finest examples of these can be found in the ancient art from the Roman world or from the Byzantine churches. Now, if you want to explore the mosaic technique, you can use these instructional material here. The links will be posted in the description so you can access them. Now, what skills can this activity develop? Now, the mosaic activity relies heavily on a child's fine motor skills and hand-eye coordination. It can also help the child understand shapes, help the child understand space, and help the child understand how to organize and create based on the design that they're doing. It's a great evaluation activity and can be used for other subject areas as well. Now, if you have any questions or queries, or would like me to explain something further, you can post your questions in the comment section down below or send them to me at chevronedwards at gmail.com. If you also would like me to explore a particular technique or demonstrate a particular technique for you, you can also post the name of that technique down below and just ask me to demonstrate that technique. And I will post that video for you. Now here are my references. If you'd like to access this material, I can also make them available in the description down below or at your request. So, thanks for watching. I hope I assisted you in understanding picture making techniques a little bit more. And I hope I encouraged you to explore a few in your classes. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.